All right, you see how we cut that in there and I'm gonna make that deeper. And then we're gonna cut it right out in here and come down like that. And it's gonna be, we'll, we'll, we'll take the hand back a little bit, but it'll, it'll be a, him holding, sticking his hand. Now we'll just kinda come down a little bit more now that we've got the hands uh, the way we want them or not necessarily the way we want them but but they're they're down a little bit so we can we can remove a bunch of it uh, out of it like that this all out as we go along. Get this coming down. Just kind of taking some wood off. Okay. Now, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to kind of make this a little bit smaller here. This head is way, way too big. I know that one thing, you know, I, I love my house that it's being but if, if it ever happens again well like so some guy was kidding with me he said well <laughs> I said well I'll probably finish my house at least by July he said well that's just in time for hurricane season <laughs> yeah. I had to laugh I couldn't help it folks it was <laughs> it was kind of a not the best comment in the world but it was I, you know I just kind of laugh about it but I it, it, this ever happens again and there won't be any more trying to put a house together um, it's just too much and Laura what building materials are now and everything like that I mean if they continue to go up anymore it, it just people won't be able to afford nothing the okay now you see Now, this will come down even a little bit more. And we'll just kind of do that. All right, let me come to the middle of my shoes. Let me go ahead and divide those. I'm tired of looking at them being one piece. them right there kind of spread them out like I say usually I cut all this on a bandsaw get all this done where I don't have to but I know a lot of you don't have bandsaws I know I understand that now more than ever 
Although I, I don't want to do everything out of a block of wood. I'm trying to do as much as I can to show you. Okay, now there we are separating our, our, our shoes a little bit here. Now what we want to do is to definitely come up in the middle here where the crouch, crouch area is and make that in there and separate that in there. Okay, you see that? That separation right there. Hen. Okay. Now, all this is still a bit too big. It's gonna have to come down. This will come back like that. Kind of a See there? Okay. Um, what do we do now? Let's work on the head. Let's work on, first of all, let's go ahead and let's draw us a hat on this gentleman. And I'm gonna have the cut hat come down pretty low, basically over his eyes. So it just goes around his head there. And then you cut and come up from underneath. And you cut and you come up from underneath. Cut. Come from this side. You come in the front here. Come up from underneath. Come up to the front here. Come up from underneath. And come up from underneath. Come up from underneath. Underneath. This stop cut that you're using basically right here. And you work your way all the way around this thing, and then you just sort of start taking off underneath it. Getting later in the afternoon, cars are starting to really move now, and so you're going to hear a lot of cars. What we do. See that? That's how we're going to approach this. got the hat around so I'm gonna come down in here and what I do is I make a cut and I come from the top 
I just remove it like that. Come around, make a cut, come to the top, take off, same type of deal in other words. Don't take off a lot, you don't have to. And we're just starting to make the top of the brim of the hat. And we'll get the rest later, I mean, or as we go along, but but we're just working around the hat and don't put too much pressure just a little bit just like that see that and then we start working with a little bit more you do it, do it once again you keep going around and you bring down the brim as you do it You work yourself around the hat. Don't try to take too much off at one time. Work it around. Work it around. See that? Now there's a lot more that's got to go, including there's a lot more underneath here it's got to go. But we'll work that out. That's what I'm saying. The main thing is just be careful and don't take too much at one time. Okay, see that? See that as we're getting the head uh, down now. And once again, I, I, I take a little bit more off on the brim every time. And I just take this off in here. By using stop cuts, you want to be careful and take some more off up here. A lot of people want everything perfect but I, I just I just like to do it just a whittle take things off doesn't have to be perfect just enjoyable to myself a lot of people measure that's fine I'm just carving an old hobo here you know and uh, I'm not really And I lose a lot of sleep if things are the measurements are not just exactly right. Now, like I said, my hobos are very dirty. They're not clean. They're not smiling. They're not happy hobos. Most of them are are you know dirty gringy uh, to be honest with you that's why I, I went in to doing my hobos like that is because because when the whole a lot of hobos I would see were uh, sorry I've changed my position here a little bit were smiling and happy and all that stuff but I never saw any pictures of happy hobos they were all I mean they laughed I'm sure and stuff like that most of them didn't know where their next meal was coming from and a lot of them resorted to stealing they of course rode the trains illegally you were not supposed to ride a train without a ticket but they would jump the cars and they would ride them there was a movie in the 1970s with Lee Marvin called uh, oh god what was it called uh, hmm I'm sorry. Uh, anyway, it was about uh, a hobo. Lee Marvin played a guy who was a um, king of the hobos or whatever it was. And he was, uh, and Ernest Borgnine played the, the railway, uh, played the train conductor. 
who would try to catch and kill the hobos that were in uh, something of the north. I don't know. Emperor, oh, Emperor of the North. That's what it was. Emperor of the North. Never seen it. It's a very good movie. Uh, David Carradine. Not David Carradine. Uh, Keith Carradine is a very young, young guy in it. Uh, and Marvin and Board Nine are just excellent. They're just very very good and this movie it's called Emperor of the North and it was probably made in the oh gosh 70s I'm sure and uh, it's a good show it's about hobos and about uh, their lifestyle a little bit but it's more of a of a kind of a you know he can ride the train. It's sort of a suspenseful thing. They have a pretty good fight at the end of it. Uh, on the train, him and Ernest Borgnine do. So, anyway, all right. Here's his hat, and I'm going to bring this down here. I want to be careful. I'm gonna bring that bring that down and bring it, you know, get a little bit more. I mean, that's what I'm gonna do as I go around. Uh, I get it kind of situated at the top here, and then I just bring it down a little bit more. See, as you get the thing, and and hobo's hats were not. Most of them were. They picked them up somewhere or got them off of another dead hobo or whatever it was, and they were not pretty hats. They were they were just pretty plain and. They weren't fancy hats like people wear today. They were very plain and, and, and quite dirty and grungy. Because that's the life they lived. I mean, they weren't able to bathe and they were not able to do the things that they should have done because they lived from town to town trying to get work. And at that time, there wasn't much work, I'll tell you. Uh, when, I, when I read about the Great Depression, <clears throat> there was very little work that went on. Here we go, as, as we look at our piece here. Okay. Um, let's, let's kind of spring this down just a little bit. Tell you what, let's go ahead and put a, um, we can go ahead and come up here like this on the back of him and make his arm like that. And when others, we just come up here like that. It's, it's They had a hobo museum in Jackson, Mississippi. It was, no, it was Jackson. No, it was Jackson, Mississippi. Casey Jones Museum. And, um, hobos did a lot of art, but they did mostly art with, uh, they did it with a knife. They did it with uh, boxes. They made boxes uh, with cardboard, stuff like that, things that they found. And they did really good intricate designs on them and beautiful hobo art at one time was worth quite a bit of money um, because it was not so much the greatest art in the world, but it was of an era, of an age that, um, had Woody Guthrie, the singer Woody Guthrie, was sort of a hobo. In fact, he was. He used to ride the railways and stuff. The, the, uh, that was uh, Arlo Guthrie's dad, and he was a big uh, singer back then. Uh, old Woody Guthrie. He uh, the reason he wasn't a famous singer, but he was a one of these kind of uh, old. He talked about people who were poor. He talked about railroad workers. He talked about 
his songs reflected a lot of the times and they are very you know he's famous his name is Woody Guthrie and he lived a life like that he's kind of a uh, what do you call him they were sort of uh, a person against the establishment and stuff like that he was because uh, uh, he was poor and but he sang songs that way. Woody Guthrie. And then of course his son, Arlo Guthrie. Everybody remembers Arlo Guthrie from, uh, well not everybody, but though, you know, older people remember a movie called Alice's Restaurant that Arlo Guthrie wrote. And he sung songs. And same type of deal. It's, uh, except that Woody Guthrie uh, was Became quite known and famous for his his uh, his uh, songs during uh, prohibition during that th and that time. Okay, I'm gonna remove a little bit more wood up here so the head will stand out a little bit more. I like the head to come further out. Just always did, just like that. So, um, those were some times in the 1920s. They were very famous times. And uh, tramp, it was called tramp art. It wasn't called hobo art. It was called tramp art. And that's what a hobo was referred to sort of like then. It was a tramp. And a tramp was a homeless person. He was a person who had no means of support and he was looked down upon as that but yet that's really wasn't what a lot of those men were they were men that were yeah they didn't they didn't have any money you're right but they are they were men that actually some of them had good jobs at one time I'm gonna take and we're gonna draw a little jacket just down here like this on this side I'm gonna make a cut, and I'm gonna come back with a deep. There we go, just like that. See? I'm gonna make it all the way down. And we're gonna cut it. Now you can put different clothes on, but most of them had uh, coats on. Most uh, hobos did. Ugh. 